left if I divide by 1? Yeah, the same thing, you're right. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. So let me recap a little bit what we've done. We've done a dining method like we did before. We have B here, A times C here. We found our two numbers that add and multiply respectively. We cannot go directly to our factors. It doesn't work that way because we have that, that two right up front. We have a coefficient that's not one. So we have an extra step. We split up the middle term. No problem. This gives us four terms, which allows us to do factoring by grouping. We group the first two, we see we factor out an x. We group the second two, there's nothing to factor out besides a 1. Now here's how you tell you've done this correctly. This and this should be exactly the same. If they're not, you've made a mistake. Go back and fix it. This has to work. If you've done this correctly, this has to work. Are you with me on this? It's got it. So, they are the same, which means we can go about the same thing we did over here. This part and this part, we're going to factor out. We're going to put our 2x minus 7. Remember, we're dividing it. We're factoring this out, so it's removing from both these terms. That's why we're only going to have it once down here. So we're taking this out front, and we're going to have another parentheses afterwards. And the only thing we have to do is write this term with this gone, and this term with this factor gone. What's going to be left inside of our parentheses? We just have an x. And this is the reason why I had to write the plus 1, because I can't have you forget about it, right? You don't want to forget about plus 1. And then that plus 1. Could you check your work? Sure. Distribute that. See that this is 2x squared. You have a 2x minus 7x. Hey, that's negative 5x or minus 5x and a minus 7 variant. So this works just fine for us. It took us a while to explain that, uh, but this goes pretty quick once you get the hang of it. Let's do, let's do one more together. I'll give you one to do on your own. And then we'll go back to C.1 and finish off, see how this relates to our equations. We're going to try to go a little bit more quickly on this next one, okay? So stick with it, because I've already given you the steps. Oh, by the way, um, the lectures are being posted online as we speak. So the lecture from yesterday is on today, and the lecture from today will be on probably tomorrow morning. So if you need a refresher on this stuff, go on there. Also, the homework assignments will be posted online daily. But you have to remind me at the end of class to give you my website, because I totally forgot to give that to you every single day so far, OK? <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to be able to find it. Okay. So let's try 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. By the way, this lesson is probably one you might want to go back and review throughout the semester because it deals with factoring, right? We're going we're gonna to do this like every single lesson almost. It's crazy. What's the first thing we do when we're factoring this particular item, this particular three-term polynomial? We would look for one. Does it have a greatest common factor? Now we really want it to, but no, it doesn't. The 9, the 24 have one, the 24 and the 16 have one, but not all three of them have one. So what's the next thing we do if we can't find a GCF? What do we do? Terms. What now? How many terms? Okay, how many terms does it have? What's that tell you to do? Let's do a diamond. I want you to set up the diamond problem here. If you need a calculator, take out a calculator. That's fine. Hey, what number goes on the top of our diamond problem, folks? Perfect. What number goes on the bottom of our diamond problem? Yeah, that is... Oh, it looked bad, but it's not so bad, is it? Let's take 10 seconds and think of, if you need 10 seconds to do this one, think about what adds to 24 and multiplies to 144. They're both positive. They've got to both be positive. What are those numbers? Now here's a key question I'm going to be asking you over and over and over again. Can we go directly to my factors or do I have an extra step? What tells you you have the extra step here? We have the number in front of the x. Yeah, excellent. That's exactly right. So we can't just go x plus 12, x plus 12, done. Yeah, it doesn't really work. Uh, we've got to do the extra step. And what the extra step allows you to do again is simply to split up that middle term. 
we have our 9x squared, that kind of looks like a g, plus 12x, plus another 12x, and then plus 16 at the back end. So I'm rewriting this one, I'm just splitting this number up by these two numbers. That's all I'm doing. What's the next thing I'm doing? Hmm? Okay. Okay. I did. I think so. I don't know. I really didn't hear that well. I was just giving you confidence so you can say it again. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we, we do what? And once we have our four terms, four terms should key you in on something. Great. Yeah, factor by grouping. That means we look for our greatest common factor here and the greatest common factor here. On your own, I want you to greatest common factor that one. And on your own, I want you to greatest common factor that one. You know you did it right if you end with a similar factor. What factors are the first two? What are we going to be left with from this part? Great. Remember, you can always check by just distributing to make sure you have that right. It's key. Then we're going to have a plus because we have a plus there. That sign's going to follow down. It says we're going to factor out a positive something. That's what this means. So we factor out a positive what out of that? Four. And we're going to be left with what? Three. Did we do it right? Yes. You can immediately check because this and this are the same. If those were different, you would have this problem wrong. What this says we can do is take this, since it's exactly the same in both of our large terms, Factor it out, and what we're remain, what's remaining from each of these large terms is going to go in our second parentheses. What's remaining after we factor out our 3x plus 4? 3x plus 4. Well, that's weird. Did that ever happen before? Mm -hmm. Not in this class, but yeah, it happens often, <laughs> really. Uh, this, this situation gives us the same factor twice which you could distribute and see that you're right. Is there a different way that we could write this? Yeah. So. Great, okay, so as long as we put the square outside the parentheses of our 3x plus 4 squared, that's really the appropriate way to write that, and we're done. Why don't you try one on your own, then I'll, I'll kind of tie all this together with our equations and we'll call it a day. through that on your own. Make up a diamond problem. See if it needs an extra step or not. You should know that. Figure out the rest of it. Factor it accordingly. And then distribute at the end. Just make sure you have this thing right. I'll be walking around if you guys need help. Just let me know. By the way, I'm not going to be going over how to factor sum of cubes and difference of cubes in class. I want you to look at that. I'll give you just a couple problems in your homework, but it's really outlined well in your book. It's very similar to difference of squares. I want you guys to read that. I want you to look at it. If you need help on it, come by. I'll, I will help you on that. But I want you to read it for yourself. Is that, is that okay with you? If you, need, if you need more, come in. By all means, I will help you. I'm going to get started on this in about 30 seconds or so. Let's see how far we can get. Hopefully, we can get done with this.
Well, we can't ignore greatest common factor ever, but this one doesn't have one, just like the other ones did. It doesn't have a greatest common factor for us to take out first. So we count the number of terms. We see we have three terms. That means diamond problem. Hopefully you set that up correctly. We're going to have a positive 2 here and a what down here? Great. We're getting that by multiplying A and C again. We look and see that we're going to add to positive 2 and multiply to negative 15. Did you get those numbers? Okay. Let's try it. How do we tell? How do we tell? Well, we have to check, right? We, this one would work here, but then when we add it, oh, that's, this is going to give us negative 2. That's a problem. So if that happens to you, it might happen. No problem. Just switch your signs. Go, okay, let's see if this works. Negative 15, yeah. Positive 2, great. This one works for us. So if that happens to you, make sure you double check before you go any further. This is a very good indicate, well, example for us to look at, look at that fact that if you make a mistake, it's not a big deal. Just go back and fix it. Be checking your work every single step. That way you don't waste a whole lot of time getting to the end and having the wrong answer. That's, that's the bad thing. Okay, are we going to go straight to our factors or are we going to have an extra step here? Extra step. And again, because the A is not one, that tells us that. So we're going to break up our middle term. Hopefully you did this. <coughs> squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 3. Now, I wrote this a certain way because I want you to see what happens over here. If you wrote this differently, you should end with the same answer. I just want to show you what happens on this part of when we factor by grouping. Did you make it down this far, folks? Yes. Okay. So factoring by grouping, out of these first two terms, I'm seeing a 5x. So we're going to factor out 5x and get x plus 1. You still with me? Yes. Okay. The other two terms, here's what happens. If you have a, make a minus here, what this is telling you is you're going to have to factor out a negative out of this thing. We don't want to factor a positive 3. That's going to mess our signs up. So if you ever have a minus, what it says to do is, okay, I'm going to factor out a negative. What number is in common to both those? Three. It's going to be a negative 3 we're factoring out. Just do the math carefully. If we factor out a negative 3, what's negative 3x? divided by negative 3? What's negative, just this part, what's negative 3x divided by negative 3? Remember we're factoring it out. Positive x, that's what's going on. What's negative 3 divided by negative 3? Positive 1 or negative 1? So you're going to ask Mr. Leonard, how did the signs change? How they, well, wait a second, where did that plus come from? We're factoring out a negative. We're removing that by division. That's why these signs are both changing. This, this we're factoring out a negative 3 from, and it's going right here. That becomes a positive x and a positive x. Are you, are you clear on this? Mm -hmm. So whenever you have a minus there, you're factoring out a negative. That's going to help you out a lot. And it, it says that we're right. I mean, we have this down. So we'll factor out an x plus 1. What are we left with? That's factored. Now, what we're going to do in the last two minutes is we're going to go back to C.1. I'm going to show you how this works with our equations. And we'll start here next time. So if you remember this problem from last time, we had x squared plus 5x plus 6. Right? That was, that was the actual trinomial there. But then we had an equal sign. Equal zero. We said, oh, that's an equation. How in the world do we solve it? Here's how factoring is incorporated with equations in order to solve this problem. 